So good afternoon, February of 20, 2014. This is CISG 114, Section 1, Web Technology. And my today is day number three, the second class in the second week of the semester. So let's get started. Welcome back, my dear students. Welcome back after lunch. Unfortunately, I did not get oranges for you today. Maybe next time, right? So, um, this is the second class in the second week of the semester. And um, when I go back to look at what we should have done, all right, when I check this on the steps here, okay, so before class, so something that I expect that you get prepared before you come to class. So hopefully, you have already select on the each of the question for this week's reading list, a topic of your interest. So the first question is, what is information technology? The second is, what is knowledge society? So your task this week is to pick one topic from numerous choices here under each question, do some study of it, make some notes, and put it in your online journals, okay? And then by the end of the week, you should name your learning partner, okay? And write your learning partner's information for my reference. And how do you do that, okay? So let me go to the end of the week activity here. If you go to the end of the week activity here, and you scroll down this page, okay? You see, I can already provide a table for you here. So what you need to do is you highlight the table, you copy it, okay? So, and then, as I can advise you, the way to inform me who your partner is, is to go to Dr. Bat's Q&A hotline for week number two. So you click on this link, and then you will brought into the UN Moodle environment if you have already logged in before, okay? I did it, as you can see, it's on here. And then you, what you do is to add a discussion topic, okay? So whatever topic you're going to name it, you call it. Okay, you see my learning pop up, and when you click on this particular screen in your computer. One finger hold to your control button, C T R L. Okay? Another finger hold to the button V. V. Small V. Okay? And then what you just copy from the other page will be copied here. Will be pasted here, okay? So what you do over here earlier, it's you do a copy. You highlight it. Right click, you copy, but in order to paste into your Moodle environment, whenever you are, you do one finger control, the other finger V, okay? Control V will help you paste something into this particular box. So you type in here your student ID, your soft name, your year, your major, your email address, your contact phone number and you change this to your full name and you give a Chinese name, also copy a Chinese name here, all right? And then you do the same for your potluck here, okay? Can you do that? Sure. And at the end of that, that is something that I don't like very much of this new versions of Udo. You need to right click on this table, go to table property, under border, you change the zero to two, or one, whatever you want. And you press update, and you see the grid of the table comes up. Okay? So when you see the grid of the table comes up, all right, and then you just post the forum. So when you press post the forum, you can see that it becomes a discussion thread. Okay, so when I click on my discussion thread, you see something like this. And definitely, if I'm ready to up the information, you can see your name, your partner's name here. And remember, that is your dedicated channel 
When you do that, only I can see it, all right? Not even your partner can see it. But each one of you has to do this, all right? In order to give me the information of your living partner, okay? Make sure before the end of this week, that means before the end of Saturday, you do something like this. And surely today, in the second half hour, I'm going to give each one of you a two minute self introduction of yourself. This will help you understand who you should talk to after that to make him or her your learning partner. So we got the first thing done. All right, now, as you so, you have some pieces of paper or not paper. If you forgot to bring back your piece of A5 paper, you can make one piece of paper, throw it into A5. Now let's get back to the theme of this two weeks. We say inquiry-based learning, IBL, and over the last class, we have given you a picture of what IBL is all about from the Appalachian State University, okay? So you got some idea of what it is all about, and then we do have the problem. I don't know why it didn't work, but it's okay. <laughs> Let me just show you. Maybe the problem proceeds, okay? You see that? I never know the reasons why, but it's okay. Uh, you watch it at home, and you can see some of the response here. But today, we would like to bring you into the discussions for this week, all right? So, in order to kick off the discussions of this week, um, let me see if I could give you the basic. The way in which humans interact has been changing. We are no longer confined to static spaces, independent of the evolving social communities that define these forms. We call this world Web 2.0, a world defined by social networks, wikis, RSS feeds, tagging, and user-generated content. But that was just the beginning. Introducing the new venture capitalist-funded service, Life 2.0, with all the features needed to the Web 2.0 paradigm, carried beyond the confines of a screen-based media. We are at the forefront of capitalizing in a social network that is even larger than MySpace. We are about to tap into real life. Users of Life 2.0 will no longer miscategorize who they think they are, but rather be accurately labeled by their peers through a powerful social tagging system in true week form. RSS feeds allow for constant streams of information about any person, place, or thing that a user may wish to follow, but that are probably gain or personal. Social hierarchies can now clearly and accurately be displayed by how many friends and friends of friends every user has. A network built entirely around user-generated content such as speech and everyday action. Life 2.0 is exemplifying Web 2.0 standards at their core, pushing features that provide little or no functional contribution to society. Life 2.0 is free and provides no clear revenue model, but the prospect of millions of users will ensure some grounds of easy funding. Welcome to the future. Welcome to Life 2.0. Alright, it's just about one minute to you. Um, may I invite you to come to sit together with this two uh, person sitting with this group? Oh, yeah, it's not very good. Um, like 2.0, of course, we can continue talking about this. That's the theme, not the theme, the topic of the first week. We say coming to terms to Web 2.0. And what it means is we're living our lives as Life 2.0, as you can see some of the phenomenon that you, you observed and introduced. And just today, we got news that Facebook has already acquired another very important software. Um, company called WhatsApp, WhatsApp, your, your phone, right? You always do the WhatsApp. And today, Facebook paid 190 million US dollars to acquire for one simple reason. Because outside the United States, many of the young folks are not using Facebook anymore because of WhatsApp, okay? Not long ago, Instagram, it's a company already acquired by Facebook. So Facebook is doing another round of revolutions. Uh, they're looking at what you're using and they're trying to get hold of it again. So there's another wave of like 2.0 coming. Now, I do not want to add anything more than that, but if you come to 
the second part of this series here, line 2.0, this is a discussion. I love a great story. For 25 years, you know this lady, you know, Michelle, I have the privilege of okay. reading All the reading thing helps to course. understand the implications of line 2.0 with this more than one hour. Great stories oh, right. be our foundation. Okay. I call them real life stories. I give you five Some minutes. Artists who right. make real life stories or documentaries have transformed the way we see ourselves, each other, and the world. And they're driven by their passion to enlighten, elevate, and entertain us all. These films hit us to our core. And those are the stories I wanted to share with you. Here's one of the many brilliant real life story documentary films that we brought to you on the OWN Network. Hi there, I'm Rosie O'Donnell, and welcome to tonight's presentation of the OWN Documentary Club. Our intention is to showcase hand-picked films that are about real life. Not only do they entertain, they also inspire us, engage us, and sometimes enrage us. There's nothing like walking in someone else's shoes, right? Tonight's documentary is Life 2.0. Every day, more than half a million users log on to a virtual world filled with avatars, cyber relationships, and an economy all of its own. Life 2.0 explores several Second Life residents whose real lives have been drastically transformed by the new virtual lives they now lead. I'm usually on my computer 20 hours a day. He has an addictive personality. He's spending a lot of time on Second Life. It's not like I don't have a grasp on reality, I very much do. It's kind of wild. Stay tuned for the premiere of Life 2.0.
I live in Calgary, Alberta, in Canada, and she lives in uh, New York. We met somewhere like in the end of December, I think, just before the new year. Her avatar was playing compared to others, but it was a conversation that, that changed it all. Pretty excited for me. Uh, talk about love is a drug. I use the term uh, emotional adultery because real world is hung up about physical sex, but what's really more important is the emotional attachment you have with someone. Real-life partners really don't know what we're up to. As far as they're concerned, it's just some kind of game that we play. It's a little bit more than what the Philip could tell you because we start with observation first. 
you're doing more interpretation of this. Because at the beginning, when he said this, maybe it's a housewife. Yes. But you do not know anything more than that, other than housewife. I think they have a relationship. Okay. Yeah. You, that's one suggestion. But we start with observation. Something that could be seen and collected from the failure to survive. Because we are going to do learning through what? Inquiry-based learning, all right? Inquiry-based learning, we need to ask questions. And the way we ask questions is we start with observation or observations. So now based on your observable information in this first six to eight minutes, Greg suggests it would be somewhat like a blind day they met online, all right? But the interesting thing of the blind day is not so blind because it's not online. There's something called avata, a virtual figure. And avata, the virtual figure, is a human with a face which is very much like a two leg, right? So actually, it's an avata with some real human characteristics. And then, what is happening? What kind of environment we see at the very beginning with it is in a virtual world, right? Okay, in the in today's world, because I stopped right here in San Francisco, because they're just going to tell you what's happening. In today's world, uh, we are living in a physical world. Humans, white and fresh. But ever since the uh, the coming of the Web, the World Wide Web, okay, since 2004, people start creating a virtual world in which we can communicate through the virtual world. The different stages of development, we start with email, and then we come to chatting online, and then we can see some faces there, and then they go to think, of, what if I could create the whole world and they call this, by uh, one of the creator in San Francisco, they call this whole virtual world, the second life world. In the second life world, if you go to study at the University of Hong Kong, they have classes that you don't need to come to the physical classroom. You go to the virtual classroom. There is a the University of Hong Kong campus in the virtual world called second life. And over there, the classrooms there, and the classes happen over there. Okay? And how do I attend a virtual class? I need to create an avert a virtual figure, which is me. Okay? And then I will duplicate my whole face there with my identity. So I go to the virtual class with registration, attendance too. Uh, with that information, you know that these two persons, in a sense, they have the virtual presence in the second night world, okay? And they met over there, okay? And somehow, it looks like they built the virtual house over there, or maybe it's a, it's a holiday inn over there. And they create a friendship between the two of them, okay? And then what Kenneth and Greg suggest when Greg suggests a date that means it's more than friendship, it's a loving relationship, something like that. And Kenneth uh, interpreted much further. Because the, the Alberto woman there was introduced as a housewife, and then here comes another man, and so Kenneth suggests there's an affairs. Okay. Now, we do not care about it, it's an interpretation. Okay, so that is the beginning of the story. Life 2.0 tells us something. In today's world, because of the development of the intellect and the world wide web and the existence of those virtual worlds, people have different kind of interactions with our humans, even through a virtual figure in the second line world. That is the beginning of the story. Okay? So definitely I recommend that you go on and continue watching that. It's a documentary. Don't worry, it's a documentary, it's not something too big for you to see. No, I don't think there is XXX stuff over there, okay? It's a documentary produced by the older Rigby's documentary company. Okay? 
but it tries to look into the impact of Web 2.0 in our life from the specific incidents of what if you create your virtual presence in the virtual world called Second Eye and you can encounter a Vata representing physical human being they will come to say hello, can I buy you a drink? Just like in the canteen when people come, can I sit on your table and start talking to you? Okay, so it's somewhat like this. Now that, and I, I believe personally, it's very good introductions of what is meant by like 2.0, very strict in the point of this example. And all of them, two, are many, many different kinds of introductions. So, observation. We want to help to understand inquiry based learning, and we start by inviting you to observe, list out what you can see from something like this, okay? And then the next step after observation is interpretation, I. Interpretation is, what does this mean? What does it mean that this woman is a physical person waiting in the airport for the other man? They met and they create the relationship Okay, so there are a lot of questions. And of course, the third important stage in inquiry-based learning is application. What can you learn from it? Now, I invite each one of you to continue watching this at home so that you can have some kind of interpretations of your own and then come up with some lessons learned on your own. You share that in your journal and definitely you discuss that with your learning partner. Okay, so that is the beginning of the story. So let me continue with uh, another episode here. So this covers a little bit of coming to terms with Web 2.0 in our daily learning. Okay, this is a rather interesting example. Okay, now let's go to another thing. Let's try to see a little bit of the history of the internet. The internet in the year 2009. We send emails, make calls over the internet, and discuss topics we take an interest in. Even our banking is going virtual. But what we take for granted today was only a vague idea 50 years ago. In order to understand how we got this far, let's go back to 1957, when everything began. Before 1957, computers only worked on one task at a time. This is called batch processing. Of course, this was quite ineffective. With computers getting bigger and bigger, they had to be stored in special cooled rooms. But then, the developers couldn't work directly on the computers anymore. Specialists had to be called in to connect them. Programming at that time meant a lot of manual work and the indirect connection to the computers led to a lot of bugs, wasting time and fraying the developers' nerves. The year 1957 marked a big change. A remote connection had to be installed so that the developers could work directly on the computers. At the same time, the idea of time sharing came up. This is the first concept in computer technology to share the processing power of one computer with multiple users. On October 4th in 1957, during the Cold War, the first unmanned satellite, Sputnik 1, was sent into orbit by the Soviet Union. The fear of a missile gap emerged. In order to secure America's leading technology, the U.S. founded the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency in February 1958. At that time, knowledge was only transferred by people. The DARPA planned a large-scale computer network in order to accelerate knowledge transfer and avoid the doubling up of already existing research. This network would become the ARPANET. Furthermore, three other concepts were to be developed, which are fundamental for the history of the Internet. The concept of a military network by the RAND Corporation in America. The commercial network of the National Physical Laboratory in England. 
and the scientific network Cyclades in France. The scientific, military, and commercial approaches of these concepts are the foundations for our modern internet. Let's begin with the ARPANET, the most familiar of these networks. Its development began in 1966. Universities were generally quite cautious about sharing their computers, therefore small computers were put in front of the mainframe. This computer, the Interface Message Processor, took over control of the network activities, while the mainframe was only in charge of the initialization of programs and data files. At the same time, the IMP also served as interface for the mainframe. Since only the IMPs were interconnected in a network, this was also called IMP subnet. For the first connections between the computers, the network working group developed the Network Control Protocol. Later on, the NCP was replaced by the more efficient Transmission Control Protocol. The specific feature of the TCP is the verification of the file transfer. Let's take a short detour to England. Since the NPL network was designed on a commercial basis, a lot of users and file transfer were expected. In order to avoid congestion of the lines, the sent files were divided into smaller packets, which were put together again at the receiver. Packet switching was born. In 1962, American Theracast aircraft discovered middle and long-range missiles in Cuba, which were able to reach the United States. This stoked fear of an atomic conflict. At that time, information systems had a centralized network architecture. To avoid breakdown during an attack, a decentralized network architecture had to be developed, which in case of loss of a node, would still be operative. Communication still used to work through radio waves. That would have caused problems in case of an atomic attack. The ionosphere would be affected and the long wave radio waves wouldn't work anymore. Therefore, they had to use direct waves, which, however, don't have a long range. A better solution was the model of a distributed network. Thus, long distances could be covered with a minimum of interference. Another milestone followed with the development of the French network Cyclades. Since Cyclades had a far smaller budget than ARPANET, and thus also fewer nodes, the focus was laid on the communication with other networks. In this way, the term Internet was born. Moreover, Cyclades' concept went further than ARPA's and the NDLs. During communication between sender and receiver, the computers were not to intervene anymore, but simply serve as a transfer node. Suclade's protocol went through all machines using a physical layer that was implemented into the hardware, providing a direct connection with the receiver and end-to-end -end structure. Inspired by the Suclade's network and driven by the incompatibility between the networks, their connection gained in importance everywhere. The phone companies developed the X.25 protocol, which enabled communication through their servers, in exchange for a monthly basic charge, of course. DARPA's transmission control protocol was to connect the computers through gateways. And the International Organization for Standardization designed the OSI reference model. The innovation of OSI was the attempt to standardize the network from its ends and the channel's division into separate layers. Finally, the TCB assimilated the preferences of the OSI reference model and gave way to the TCP IP protocol, a standard which guaranteed compatibility between networks and finally merged them, creating the Internet. By February the 28th, 1990, the ARPANET hardware was removed. But the internet was up and running.
evolutions of the eight lakh to 2009 from 1957. Well, when I was doing my uh, college study in the United States, I cannot see uh, the dates from 1990 to 2009 because my college year was between 1985 to 1988. At that time, we cannot see as much as what you see today. Well, I still remember that when I was in college, I had to study the X.25 packet switching protocol together with the TCP IP, which is one of the candidates. And then at that time, the OSI model, they talked about it, very promising protocol. And today, what happened? TCP IP one, and all the other become ASINs, <coughs> archives, and library. So, but the, the interesting thing about this, do you still remember that what is being introduced here? What are the original three important appetites to induce today's intellect from France? from the United States and from England. So in France, the cyclet, the basic for the commercial uh, network doing transactions in the business. So in England is made for scientific investigations by scientists doing something like and in the United States many for national defense because they are doing everything they can to prevent the Soviet Union do any attack on the country, particularly they had to back out of the United States and Cuba. At that time, the Soviet positions a lot of the nuclear missiles. Okay, so the tension is very tight. So the scientific, the commercials, and the national defense of the three important countries create the first versions of the what they call the intellect, or the amount of alliance country at that time. But today, Definitely, the internet is a network of computing devices all over the world. And I want it. one thing you heard from this soft video that you need to keep in mind. When they try to strengthen the connection from one to the other, what they have developed is, even though I have a disconnection from this point to that point, Okay, I can always come up with another connection. Why is the other entity come back to this? But that is the characteristic of today's internet true. You will never worry as much as we could about the difficulty of connecting any two entity in the, of computing devices in the world. There are so many different kinds of connections today. Too numerous to tell and a system to find a way. And that is a very interesting thing. But because of that, it's also sometimes very difficult to look for the criminal truth. When they try to launch attack some site, okay, which is not where he or she is. So that is a very interesting thing about it. Alright? So on the basis of the internet. Then let me give you a little bit more.
transforming the way people use the World Wide Web. With Web 2.0, the webmaster shares the responsibility with his internet audience for keeping the website informative and engaging. The modern website is transforming from a simple place to store information to a dynamic place where people regularly gather and interact.
So in a minute, um, I will expect each one of you will just, you can just stand where you are. Just make the microphone introduce yourself. I will be there during the camera event so that I can free you to use properly. Uh, okay, this is very important in your class. This is basically your class participation. You can grab forms from that because later on, towards the end of the semester, you can tell me uh, because this is why, how you can get a form. On a particular day, February 20, 2014, day number two, I did my class presentation for myself two minutes. And that is one class participation. Now, you find points like this. Because that is one way to encourage students to do some more talking. Okay, so. Let's get started in one minute, okay? get started with the second part of today's class, day two, CISG 114, section one, web technology and light, after the first part. In a minute, students will individually introduce themselves with a two minute uh, self-presentations and hopefully we get one another, understand one another better, okay? Okay, can we invite? The first table, can you do that? Yes. Can you uh, stand up, introduce yourself? Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Helen. Helen? Thank you. My full name is Tao Toi Lung, so my English name is Helen. Thank you, Helen. And I'm fresh. I'm a med freshman, and my major is public administration. So I would like to be a administrator in my future. Thank you. And because it is a challenging work, I think. And um, I think I can keep five hours at least per week. Wow, thank you very much. You're um, um, The best class I ever had is the experiment about electricity. electricity. It's a GE yeah. course, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, we, do the, um, we did the experiment first and we will have the, we have the uh, discussion and the teacher tell us uh, what we should done, then the electricity is, you can do your experience better. Okay. Um, I can learn in this class because I can uh, work with my hand and also I can think uh, how to be a better uh, experiment and learn something in the class. This is my introduction. Thank you, Helen. Thank you very much. May I suggest the next student face the camera so that uh, we can uh, see you better? Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chen Hoyan, and my major is public administration. Uh, I want to become an English translator in the future. And uh, I, I think I can spend uh, more than four hours per week per week in this course. And the best class I've ever had is maybe my major course is called ENGB at one. Uh, let me think about it. 
Thank you. So you like drama very much. Uh, I want to uh, play in class. Oh, that's good. Help us to do it too. Thank you. Sarah, thank good you. Good afternoon. My name is Vicky Yi. You can call me Shani. Shani. And my major is uh, Government and Public Administration. And I'm a freshman. And that means I'm a year one student. And I want to be an officer in the future and and I joined this course because I want to know more about this area, the knowledge of this area and because um, it's very, uh, the technology is very important now today and the best class I've ever had is my English class in last last semester and I think there have there are lots of fun to learn and I after this class I also learn lots of the ability. Yes. And the time I will I will spend on this course is uh, maybe more than four hours per week also and I will try my best to to learn in this class. That's all. Thank you, Sally. Could you pass the microphone to one table of your choice? <laughs> Thank you, yes. It does not mean that table have to start immediately, but if you want to, definitely, you're welcome. So you want to start? Or we have another table with the microphone. So which table would like to go first? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, I'm Cersei, and I'm from um, government and public administration. I'm a young student. Uh, uh, yes. I think the best class I've ever had is my major. Um, the introduction to um, international relationship. Um, we just talk about in that class. We just talk about uh, um, uh, things about um, the international issues and organizations. Um, I. The worst class I've ever had is um, maybe uh, I I don't know yet. Uh, maybe I will have have one in the future. Um, um, that's all. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for your sharing. Hello. Um, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Naftal. Always my surname. Uh, I'm from Namibia. Uh, for those who don't know, Namibia is in the north south part of, I mean, in the southern part of Africa, next to South Africa. Okay. Um, here to be my bachelor's in communication, E2. Thank you. Um, why I chose this course is because uh, it's interesting and I think it's uh, relevant to my course. So. I think it will be useful in the future. Uh, my favorite class that I took, uh, of course, in this university, I would say is for programming science. Okay. Uh, because uh, there's a good feeling after you create a program and it really like runs. Uh, it really feels good, so I would say programming science was my favorite division. Okay. Uh, my worst, I would say, is history. Not because I hate history, because uh, but because uh, uh, there's a lot of stuff to read and uh, most of the things are like they happened in the 1900s and uh, I don't really think some of them are relevant to this day. <laughs> um, uh, 
apart from that, I love to do sports. I'm a football player. I play uh, for one of the football teams here in Macau, a sport team, for those who know. Uh, that's much I love for them. And uh, I'm very open-minded. I like to meet new people and uh, learn new things. Thank you. Thank you. You're very much welcome. Thank you. My name is Andy and I am the freshman of UMAC and my major course is uh, Public Administration. And uh, why I choose this course because um, the title of this course is very attractive because web technology and life and it means that and it can influence our it can influence our basic life. So I just want to um, I just want to find how much impact that it can influence us. And I think I can use three or four hours a week to um, participate in the course. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, uh, one of the course that I think it is very useful and great is the last semester, the introduction to program administration. And the professor is called Bill Chow. And everyone called him a killer, but I think uh, he can tell us a lot of the uh, real things in the show, uh, so society, because he always go to protest in the street and, and participate in some Political, uh, politi political consultations or something etc. So uh, I think uh, he's very great. Thank you very much. Thank you for your sharing. So thank you. So um, which table would like to go first? Penny's table or the table right here? So you just decide. It's very up to you. So, Kenny, thank you, Kenny. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, actually, um, I'm kind of not ready yet, but anyway, uh, my my major is Japanese studies. Uh, myself, uh, I like reading and I like history. And my favorite course is actually this course. Well, for a very practical reason, is there's no examination. <laughs> okay. Um, to myself, uh, I consider the web technology is, um, I have to tell the truth, I don't think it's very significant to us for right now, and I know I'm wrong. I will give you my reasons, because I think that uh, nowadays we, using the internet, mainly, I would say, is for entertaining. Uh, there are some online training or, or business using, but it's not, but we have to, for, Let's be frank, we have to still go to the bank daily and we have to, you know, we have to sign our contracts. Uh, we have to always aw aw be aware of the online cheating. I think it's even more dangerous than the real life. Uh, I know I'm wrong. I, uh, for now on, I, I really enjoy using the internet because I'm having a lot of fun, but I would like to, s I, I would say that I don't see that much of importance of changing our life because in the 80s we don't use internet as much as now uh, nowadays but uh, I don't see huge changes uh, among health or, or, or uh, our daily lives. I know I'm wrong. I want to find out the answer for why I'm wrong in this course. Thank you. Thank you, Kenny. My name is Leung Chi Eng and you can call me Nicole. I'm a freshman in UMAC and my major is psychology. Uh, why I choose psychology? Because actually I don't want to be a psychologist, I'm just interested about the knowledge of psychology and humans. Um, but additional thing is uh, I'm a very sporty girl, I love to play handball and I'm a member of the Macau team. And 
the best class I have is the development of psychology. I learned the knowledge of uh, the babies to until uh, to the death. Uh, it brings me a lot of knowledge, and I, I'm very interested in that. And the worst class I've ever had is the CHIM one one because I'm graduated from a English school. That's why I hate Chinese very much. And I hope I can put around two to three hours to this course because I uh, I have a part-time job. Thank you. Thank you, Nico. Thank you very much. Um, hello, my name is uh, Claire uh, Chen Ingen, and you can call me Clara. Uh, my major is um, English study. I choose this major is because uh, I. Uh, my passion is uh, English literature. Some people think that it's boring, but I think it's fine, so uh, I choose to study it. And um, before I came to New Mac, uh, I was studying in Hong Kong, and my favorite class is, was in my high school. Uh, it was physical art lesson. I was a physical arts student, and uh, the reason I love these classes is because um, I can get out of the school and go to the exhibition and just not just stay in the classroom. So um, and um, and um, about this course uh, I was I'm not very technology person. Um, I just have I just learned some basic used in the high school and and for my dad. My dad is very technology Person and uh, I always gain some track trick from him, and so uh, but this my knowledge can handle my daily use, and sometimes I can even fix my computer uh, just in the, some software problem. So um, I'm hope, but I still hopefully um, to have some great time in this course, even though I'm not very good at it, but I uh, I can. Uh, still have a good time here. Yeah, and uh, thank you. Thank you, Kara. Thank you. So, looks like we're going uh, one after the other. Are you ready, Greg? <laughs> uh, hello, everybody, and the camera. I am uh, Grégoire Muller, but you can call me Greg. Uh, I come from France, but I've been living in Macau for the last three years. I'm quite old for a first year student, I'm already 38 years old, but I choose to study history and I work a bit less because I'm just interested in that topic. Uh, it's not really relevant for my job because uh, it was the tourism industry or real estate, so you know, much history in this bit, but it's just interesting on a, on a personal level. And uh, I think we may be running from time, so. <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. Uh, the next you speak, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. We we want to know more about you later. Okay. Hello. Hi. Hi. <coughs> My name is uh, Hong Sang Huana, and you can call me Joanna. Joanna. Yeah. And my major is social studies, and and I choose this class. Because I'm, I've heard that this class is, I mean, nice, <laughs> something like that. Okay. And uh, I've spent for about three or four hours to learn about it. Thank you, thank you very much. The best class I've ever had, I don't know. <laughs> because Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, my name is Joanne, and I'm the student from the Faculty of Social Science, and Welcome. my major is Psychology. Um, actually, I don't know why I choose Psychology. Uh, at first, I chose Psychology as my first option because I want to get into the UN. <laughs> so I just randomly choose one. And I don't think I'm going to be a psychologist because um, 
although psychology is very interesting, but um, I don't think I will um, let psychology be my. Um, I I don't think I will find a job related to psychology. <laughs> um, the best class I ever had, um, I don't know too because every class for me is very bad. Um, and the worst class I ever had is uh, actually um, politics because it is very boring. And I hope this class will be my first best class. Thank you. Let's make it the best class, okay? Hello. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Huang Xinyuan, and you can call me Wendy. Uh, I'm from Xiamen. It's a very beautiful city in mainland China. Right. And I'm the first year student. And, and I major in communication. Uh, I want to make some progress in video production okay. and I will be fan of animation and I like drawing very much. Uh -huh. And my best class I have is the English class I have last semester. And it's very interesting and it also helped me to overcome my shyness to speak in front of many people. And I choose this class because I think the web technology is very useful. And I want to know more about it and how to use it in a good way in our daily life. Uh, I will be hardworking and try to learn more knowledge in this course. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Shai. <laughs> Hello. Um, hi, I'm Kathy from Shannon Province. Wow. Um, Welcome. Uh, I'm a freshman of FS Communication, and uh, uh, I like new things and technology, so I choose communication to be my major course. Um, Very good. In the future, I want to be a reporter because it can let me to travel around the nation or even travel around the world. Um, and maybe um, I will find some job related to new media. So um, my favorite course is new media. Um, wow, that's good. Um, uh, why I choose this course is because um, I, I like new things and technology okay. and uh, I want to figure out uh, new uh, the web technology and the, the relationship between web technology and life. Oh, that's great. That's Thank you very much. So finally we come to this table. Uh, hello. Uh, hi, I'm Winston. Okay, and Winston. I'm year one student and I'm major is psychology. Okay. Uh, I love sport, uh, but in normal life, I'm not an active person. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, I feel... Uh, uh, Why you choose this course? Uh, I choose this course because uh, the name is very interesting okay. and I spend a lot of time in the um, internet okay. uh, playing games, uh, searching things and learning a lot of uh, stuff okay. and, I, and I feel internet is a very greatest friend All right. and it makes me uh, it makes me uh, learn a lot of things. Okay. So I love internet. So I love this class. Thank you. Wow. Let's make it the best class for you too. Can you pass the microphone to one of the ladies? Hello.
see a great teacher coming out. All right, thank you very much. Um, excellent. I, I really tell you that it's, it's not easy sometimes to speak in front of the microphone, particularly when you have a teacher like me who, who not only invites you to speak, but positions the camera on you. So, but you know, one of the important things I want to develop among all of you in this class is your, your comfort to speak in front of others. Okay, so that you can have a discussions with others for issues that interest you. And I know time is coming up for today. Um, I have to apologize today. I did not make the best use of time in the first half hour very well. So I rushed a little bit through the video and then I come to give you the microphone. But anyway, let's try to do it better next week. Um, I have to appreciate the 12 journals produced by most of you in the first week, and I mostly went through all of them and stopped giving you feedback. And we're looking forward to read your journal this week. And then, remember today, I want to bring out something on IBL, okay? So when I say IBL, it means for the past week and this week also, and actually throughout the four weeks in the first learning contract, that means inquiry-based learning. There's one way I would like to suggest you to follow in order to do this IBL. Although you may discover many other ways, and my way is very simple. Throughout the whole semester, the 15 week, when you do the journal, that means the note taking, you follow the step first, observation whole. Okay? You look at what you select. You try to pick those interesting things that has captured attention in your journal in a bullet list form form, okay? And that become the first collections of your observed data. And then the second step, which I'm going to do a little bit more next week, is the I step, which I elaborate a little bit with Kevin today, is to ask questions of those captured data which you observe from your topic of interest. What does it mean for you? And the last step, which is represented by A, is the application. Once you have your interpretation of those collective data, you should ask the question, what should I learn from those things? So it's a basic step of collecting information. It's the second step of interpreting, which involves a lot of analysis, and the last step of concluding, asking what I should learn from it. And this is the basic step for IBL as far as this course is concerned. It looks easy, but it takes time to perfect the art, okay? That's the reason for each week I invite you to do your journal. That is one way for you to keep practicing this. And I hope by getting used to this method, IBL, you will discover, you will become transformed towards the end of this semester, all right? So hopefully I did not produce a boring class today, but remember, I should be the facilitator. This is your class time. So remember, name your learning partner. Do it the way I suggest you at the very beginning of the semester. Go back to this week before class, during class, after class, and end of week's activity, and see what you should have 
done, okay? It's not absolute, but take a look at the very bad. All right? I see you next week. It should be next Monday, all right? So wait for my reminder this Saturday and teacher's message this coming Sunday. Thank you very much. So that's it for today's class, day number two, CISP 114, section one, web technology of life, February the 20th, 2014. Until next week, stay tuned.